is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have our final two figures in AEW Unrivaled Collection Series number four with Santana and Ortiz, the proud and powerful, or formerly, you know, known as LAX in some circles. So here we have the last two figures in the set, guys. Really excited to add another tag team to our AEW Unrivaled Collection roster. So Santana and Ortiz look really, really good in their packaging. I like all the accessories and the craziness that we got going on with these. Both guys include interchangeable heads, which is really beautiful, but you guys know classic jack style packaging front viewing window of the two here you do have their names in gold right here aew logos on the side you do have 33 and 32 here i know it's going to bother some people so let's go ahead and hit the switch on the back you got santana there you got ortiz over here both from dynamite on 212 2019 i think wasn't it 2020 i feel like it was 2020 that may be a misprint i can't remember rest of the figures in the way we've already reviewed aew logo again right there and that pretty much does it for our packaging on on Santana and Ortiz, guys. So with that being said, let's go ahead and crack these guys out of their packaging, rank AEW Series number four, and find out where every single figure in this set stands. But before we do that, guys, we got to talk about this brand new Wrestle Crate UK exclusive figure, Pete Dunn, right here. It says Heavy Crate Champions, Pete Dunn, little mini figurine of Pete Dunn here. Beautiful image of the man here. You guys know that I love Pete Dunn. And if you guys would actually like to own this figure, you can go over to WrestleCrate.co.uk and use promo code DAMNTOYS to get a free figure included in your March edition of the Wrestle Crate box. So not only will this figure be in your March crate from Wrestle Crate UK, but also, you'll get a free figure inside if you use promo code DAMNTOYS when checking out and subscribing over there. They include a lot of great stuff. You guys can see the rest of the figures on the back of the packaging. You can see Tyler Bate and Trent Seven over here. Collect them all. This is a Wrestle Crate exclusive as well, and it was custom made. They even worked directly with Pete Dunn on this figure. So I wanted to give a huge shout out to Wrestle Crate, guys. Link in the description below. Go sign up. Use promo code DAMNTOYS again to get your Pete Dunn as well as a free figure in there and get in on some epic exclusive wrestling. Wrestling ish. Now let's get back to the review. So here's the proud and powerful out of the packaging, Santana and Ortiz. I think it's a really cool touch that Ortiz has on the Inner Circle t-shirt, which is really cool. I, I like that a lot. We are going to see what he looks like up next to Guevara and Jericho and MJF. We're still missing our Jack Swagger, a.k.a. Jake Hager, or Hagar, as Jericho likes to say. But we will definitely get all of our comparisons in and all of that, guys. But since these guys are a tag team, we're going to do all of their stuff together. So we're going to get all their accessories together, cover those, run it back, take a closer look at Santana. Santana and Ortiz. Look at their comparisons, and then we will, of course, rank AEW Series number four from worst to best, in my own personal opinion, and see where the rest of this set lands. Now, I will be honest with you, I think this full set has slapped so far. I'm pretty damn impressed with it. It may be the best set so far, and off the top of my dome, I may have to make, I may have to assess that a little bit more to get all my thoughts together, but so far, so good right now. But let's shut the hell up and dive into Santana and Ortiz accessories. So getting into Santana and Ortiz accessories, guys, I have all of Santana Santana's accessories on the left and all of Ortiz's on the right. However, the Puerto Rican flag does come with Santana, who is on the left. But diving into everything, guys, you guys will see they not only come with unit, they not only come with inanimate objects or unanimate objects or inanimate animation ridden garbage. So Santana does come with the sock or the filled sock or whatever you want to call this, the loaded sock, which is very unique. I think this is from their eye for an eye match with John Moxley, and it's pretty nice. I think the colors are good. I think the knot looks good. You even got the tube right there from the sock and you got you know it's got some thickness to it you can beat the hell out of people with it that should come in handy for some creative things or figure photography and then you of course have to have your flip-flop accessory or sandal accessory that comes with Ortiz so you get two very unique weapons choices right here maybe this will get some usage in the extreme division but I think it's really really cool you can't put this on a figure this does not disconnect but it does have a soft pliable it kind of feels like it's made out of a flip-flop not like entirely but it has a very nice soft texture to it and it feels good in the hand and everything like that so i like these accessories a lot as far as interchangeable hands go guys both of them do come with their versions of mic holding hands so santana comes with the skin tone mic holding hands and then ortiz comes with glove mic holding hands he comes with gloved hands that feature a left black glove and then a right glove that has like the puerto rican flag on them which looks really good up next to each other and then he also comes with these matt hardy style hands that's the first figure these came with i'm pretty sure but you have the matt hardy style hands in the ortiz skin tone which look good as well and then for santana's interchangeable 
interchangeable hands, guys. You do have the shooter hands or whatever, and I think you can put these on Ortiz if you wanted to, you know? So if you wanted Ortiz to do the same thing, you could do the same thing there, and these look really good, really nice sculpt going on with them, and that's cool that you can put them. You can't put them, obviously, unless you have two of them, you can't put them on both at the same time, but you could if you wanted to put this on Ortiz and then flip it out or whatever. You could do the same thing. And then last but not least, before we get into the interchangeable head sculpts, they also come with the Puerto Rican flag, or Santana comes with the Puerto Rican flag, so you can do his entrance right there. You guys know that he's very big on his heritage, where he came from and things, and this is very nice. And Jazzwares makes the UFC figures that also come with flags like this. It's not as stretchy as the flags that came with that, you know, those UFC figures, but they still feel really nice in the hand, and this is pretty cool stuff. So you get the Puerto Rican flag, all these different accessories, and then you have their interchangeable head sculpts. Now, starting out with Santana, you have the version without the eye patch, and then you have the version with the eye patch, and I think the likeness is uncanny. Like, oh my god, it looks just like Santana. As I dropped his eye patch head sculpt on the ground, you can see they're both pretty much grimacing or pissed off. I like this head sculpt a lot, and then if you know, if you had something happen to him in the Fed or something, and you want to put the one with the eye patch on there, that looks really good. I think they did an outstanding job on both of these head sculpts. It looks just like Santana, and you get a little bit different look for him. And then for Ortiz, you get two completely different hairstyles. So you have the braided hairstyle with the headband that looks really good. They do match headbands, and the hair does come off the back right here. But then you also have the non-braided head sculpt that looks great. Like the afro hair right here looks awesome. I love the way this sculpt looks. Very squishy material right here, so it's not hard and, you know, heavy and stuff. It has, actually has kind of a light feel to it, but very high quality. Both head sculpts are very high quality, and I like both of them. He is yelling here, so you get two different facial expressions, so that is very nice there. But that does it for Santana and Ortiz's accessories, guys. So now let's dive into these guys themselves and take a closer look at their bodies. All right, guys, so diving into the guys themselves, you have Santana and Ortiz. I guess we can just start off with Santana since he is on my left. Now, I don't know if you guys will notice. It's, it's kind of weird because in person, you can't really see. There's like a mismatch in skin tone. You really can't tell in person, but I feel like on camera, I was on the, uh, I was on like a Skype call or like a Instagram, whatever the hell you want to call that, like an Instagram video chat with my brother, and he said that it was pretty noticeable, but you really can't tell in person. It's kind of coming across on camera, like between the skin tone difference between the shoulders, the torso, and the lower torso, but it really doesn't come across in person. Like, it looks really good in person. So we've already covered the head sculpt, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, though. I do want to zoom in here and get a look at his tattoos because I've, they're important to him. So you got the pec tattoo right there, which looks pretty nice. Spinning him around, he doesn't have any tattoos on the back, but he does have his shoulder tat over here. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that, so I couldn't tell you, but he does have his elbow pad here. You also have the white wrist tape. One thing really cool about Santana and Ortiz, actually, both of them have their overalls pulled down, and this is like a little loose piece of rubber that hangs down. Now, it doesn't pull up and, you know, go over their straps. I thought for sure that that would be like a feature, but it is not a feature. Maybe they'll figure out a way to do that in the future, but it's got a gold, it's got gold on there. I'm not going to try and flip it up. I don't want to tear it or anything. If I had like two or three of this figure, I might try it and attempt it, but going down, he has solid black pants. I think this is the Pentagon lower. I could be wrong about that. Who the hell knows? It just looks like the Pentagon lower with like the bunched up jogger type kind of pants and then they go down and they are behind black kick pads. So his whole lower half is in total black with the knee pads and the kick pads. Really like great figure honestly. Like it feels really good in the hand. The articulation feels nice and everything. I think anything that you'd like to do with Santana and Ortiz is going to be really really fun to pose around. Can't wait to see him in some pick feds and things like that. But there is Santana and we also have Ortiz over here which we did already look at his head sculpt. We mentioned the inner circle t-shirt there. You got the inner circle logo and stuff. I guess we could do an articulation standpoint next, but he does have his t-shirt molded here. It's not just painted on, but it is sculpted there with wrinkles. You got all of his tattoos going on, which look really good. White wrist tape. Just very detailed, man. Like, you got a lot of stuff going on. You got the overalls, the gloves, the tattoos. He's a very, like, Santana and Ortiz are really good guys to make figures out of. Now, going down, he has the exact same overalls wrap or overalls, like, rubber coating over here that goes around the waist, but he does have the Puerto Rican flag hanging out right there, which that might get on people's nerves, you know, that might get in the way of stuff, but I haven't had any issues with it just yet. It is a soft rubber material, so, that it, you know, it, it can move out of the way pretty easily. Going down into the legs, they have pretty much the same exact lower half, except Ortiz has skin tone calves instead of kick pads, and then he does have, like, the Luchasaurus shoes, like the feet shoes. You guys know we covered them in many videos before. I'm pretty sure Luchasaurus will have these same feet, but Jazzwares is pretty good about doing one-of-one -one sculpts, especially with these unrivaled figures, and just, dude, I'm just so excited for the future, man. Jeremy and Magic, they are just undead. They're just undefeated, man. They're they're just super awesome. They know what they're doing. They're a great team over there, and these figures 
colors are no exception whatsoever. Like, they just feel great in the hand. They look great. And uh, we got to see what they look like up next to their inner circle mates, as well as some other tag teams that we've gotten already from AEW's Unrivaled Collection. So for your Santana and Ortiz comparisons, guys, of course, we do not have every member of inner circle, but we do have a pretty good amount right here. Sammy Guevara no longer a part of inner circle as far as right now at time of recording. That could change. We could add some new members or something like that, but we are missing Jake from the set, but I think we will get him in due time. I hope we at least get him in due time, but there's Jericho up next to the rest of them. I think they all look great together. I would love to see like some more inner circle t-shirts. We've only seen one, and that was with the Chase variant Chris Jericho, which is really hard to track down, so, and I think even John Moxley might have came with one, didn't he? His Chase variant figure from Series 2, but let's take a look at some other tag teams. And then for your AEW and Rival Tag Team comparison, guys, here is Proud and Powerful next to the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers. And I was wrong, actually, about their legs. These legs are brand new. These are not the same legs that came on Pentagon. These actually have more wrinkles and stuff. They look a little bit. They're not as wide and things of that nature, but they are similar for sure. But that does it for your AEW and Rival Tag Team comparisons. All right, now, before we rank AEW Series number four, guys, I do want to do a really quick articulation standpoint just in case you guys want to know. So Santana can look down that much. He can actually look up pretty good because he does have a shorter head sculpt right here. He can bend over really, really far. Like, that is really nice. He can, like, tuck the chin and bend over, like, all the way right there. So that is really nice to see. Back, he can also go really far back, which is just beautiful. I love posing around the AEW figures, man. It's just something that brings me a lot of joy. Now, as far as your shoulders, they do go a little bit above 90 degrees. You do get the doubled bicep right here. You do get the bicep swivel as well as double jointed arms is what I meant to say. You can spin this a little bit. You do get a little bit of diaphragm tilting right there, which is beautiful. He is on ball joints, so he can do the splitsies. You get the upper thigh cut. You do get the double jointed knees, and you also get boot rotation, unlike Pac. And then the ankles, like I mentioned, they seem to be a lot better now, man. Like, the ankles from Series 1 are, I think, a thing of the past. I don't think we have to worry about that anymore. While that was super annoying and they were hard to stand up, I don't think we have to worry about that anymore. I think we are uh, beyond that, and Santana feels really good. Now, one thing I'm interested about right here is guys like, I think it's Pentagon and guys like Dustin Rhodes. They're really hard to bend over, but I'm not getting that with this right here with this Ortiz. This is actually a really good torso to bend over and stuff like that. He can look down that much and up that much much. I'm not exactly sure about the other interchangeable head sculpt because the hair is much larger, but above 90 degrees here, he also gets the double jointed there. You do get the shoulder rotation, bicep swivel. You get some diaphragm moving right there, which is really, really good. He gets the splitsies as well. Upper thigh cut, double jointed knee, lower calf rotation. He does have ankles moved down and up. He has good ankle pivot, and he also doesn't have to worry about standing. Like He can actually stand well. Both these guys stand well, but let's move on to ranking AEW and Rival Club collection series number four from worst to best and my own personal thoughts and opinions. All right, guys, it is that time of the video where we are going to rank AEW Unrivaled Collection Series number four from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, again, you guys know criteria. Criteria comes down to excitement level for the figure, how much am I going to use it, the posability, the likeness, the scale, QC issues, accessories. I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play. Also, just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean it doesn't have any issues whatsoever. And just because a figure comes in at number six doesn't mean that it's just awful and doesn't have any redeeming qualities about it whatsoever and you should just burn it alive. There's figures that come in at the bottom that are still really effing good and we're probably going to have that problem here today because I love this whole entire wave. I love every figure in this wave so this should be uh, interesting to say the least. Now let's go ahead and get started guys. At number six coming in at number six I'm going to go with Sammy Guevara. Now it kind of pains me a lot to say this actually because first of all it's the first time in the line we haven't seen a Sammy Guevara. I actually like the head sculpt a lot. The eyes are a bit wonky at some points however when you put the sunglasses on it and you, and you put this cloth leather jacket on there and everything that looks just like Sammy Guevara in figure form and usually when that's the case it's really hard to rank a figure low it seemingly just comes down to excitement level for the figure like I'm not a big Sammy Guevara guy I was excited to expand my AEW roster in the Unrivaled collection however I'm not a big Sammy Guevara guy it just doesn't move the needle for me that much he's still getting better I think he has some good talent I'm just not a fan of his work quite yet and because of that and the leather jacket and a couple other 
other reasons, he is going to come in at the bottom of the ranking, but it's really, it's still a really damn good figure, and it pains me to put him at the bottom. Now, moving up to number five in the set, guys, I'm going to go with Matt Hardy. Now, this is another one that really, really pains me, because first of all, I love Matt Hardy. He's probably, he's probably in my top 12 of all time. He may be top 15 all time for me, and having a new figure of him, I think he's the first wrestler ever to have a figure with TNA, WWE, AEW, and that may be the only three. He may be the, I think he is the only one to have a figure from all three of those companies, like major wrestling figure companies like that. I love the head sculpt. I love the entrance coat. The attire is fire. The accessories are super badass with the Vanguard 1 and the hologram coming out of it. I really, really love it, but I think the overall thing that did it for me was the big shoes, and then his scale is a little bit off, and that kind of, you know, that kind of deters me a little bit, but I still really enjoy the figure. I'm going to try to fix his height, and I still love Matt Hardy, and I love this figure, so that is my number five. Coming in at number four, guys, this one was a difficult one for me, but I went with Cody. I went ultimately with Cody. I love the smiley face head sculpt. I love the Thronebreaker t-shirt. I think if he had his neck tattoo, it would be a little bit higher, and it's not my favorite attire. Like, the black, the electric green, and the silver with the Faro boots and everything is really sick, and it's going to be cool to, like, interchange figures with Cody and, like, put different boots on different figures and get some fix-ups going, and, like, when we, you know, when these figures maybe are more available or I get more, I can do more fix-ups and things, which will be really fun to do with the Cody's, but at this juncture, he only beat out Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara in this set for me. We have a ton of them. You guys already know that, but I think the ringside exclusive is going to beat this figure, and I think overall, it's still a really damn good figure. I just wanted to put him at number four, and I think that is where I set with that one. Moving up to number three, I'm going to go with Ortiz. Now, I love Ortiz. I think he's great. This is one half of the Proud and Powerful. I love the two interchangeable head sculpts. The inner circle t-shirt, I didn't know how I felt about him being in a t-shirt, but after getting it in hand and posing him around and having the sculpt on the sleeves and the gloves and everything like that, I really, really enjoyed this. Overall thoughts on it, though, is that he got beat out just a little bit by two other figures in this set. He's still a really damn good figure, and if you guys have a chance to pick up Ortiz, absolutely grab it. I feel like the Proud and Powerful, Santana and Ortiz, these guys are probably are going to be more obtainable at retail. I just don't know. I know Kenny's going to fly off shelves. Cody's going to fly off shelves. Matt Hardy. I think Sammy Guevara and Santana and Ortiz are probably going to be on shelves more than likely, and you will be able to grab them. So that's a great chance to get two of the best figures in the set, because that comes down to number two and one, which is going to go number two, Santana, and number one, Kenny Omega. Now, did you guys have any other recollection that it wouldn't be Kenny Omega at the number one spot? First of all, this figure is great. I love the head sculpt. I'm going to use the shit out of this figure. They updated the skin tone, and Kenny Omega, I think, came in at number one in Series 1 because, you know, we had been waiting on a Kenny Omega figure for so very long from a major company. We know they had the skin, you know, the skin tone difference, and he was really pale and everything, but with this updated skin tone, he's, he's of course, going to beat out the, you know, the rest of the set. Like, we're getting an improved Kenny, updated skin tone, better looking attire, or the attire just looks absolutely uh, just astonishing in figure form. The screaming head sculpt, just uh, just overall, just fan freaking fantastic. I mean, what do you want me to say? And I felt like Santana was the second best figure in the set, but here's my ranking again. You got Kenny, Santana, Ortiz, Cody, Matt Hardy, and coming in at the bottom, we have Sammy Guevara. Now, I had a ton of fun reviewing these figures, guys. Again, if you would like to put in a pre-order, it's going to be a really late pre-order. Like, it's probably going to be a, a month or so, probably, before you even get these figures. It could even be a couple months, but you probably want to do so if you want any chance of getting these figures, man. Go over to Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS. Pre-order set number five, man. Pre-order these figures. Like, when AEW figures go for pre-order, go, go, go. I know it's kind of difficult to bite 160 bucks sometimes when you're collecting, but these figures are going to go, and this early in the game with these, it's, I don't know how much you're going to find them at retail, how you're ever going to be able to track them down, and you can always just put it in concrete, you know? Like, if you pre-order from ringside, they're going to come. You may have to wait a minute, but they're going to come, and then you're going to have them for the future, which is something that you do not want to miss out on, but before we get out of here, guys, let's get into our random shout-out. And for today's shout-out, guys, it's going to go to Alf Veld1973, who says, we need a Seth Rollins Ultimate Edition. And I, I just completely agree with this, man. I completely agree. They could do a really badass entrance coat, you know, an entrance vest, like, highly detailed. Not like the flat ones we get that just have paint on them. They could do, like, a, a you know, one of his signature t-shirts. They could give us, like, removable gauntlets, like, sculpted removable gauntlets like he wears to the ring. A really badass entrance vest. One of his best gears that we
we've never gotten like the Avengers gear or maybe the Mania 36 gear. I don't know. They could do a lot of stuff. You could do like a, a man bun head, a pissed off determined head, a screaming head, or a smiling head. Just so many different things they could do. Or they could give us like a Messiah with the with the cloth jacket, with the fur, a Monday Night Messiah t-shirt, sculpted gauntlets, a gloved hand. I mean, dude, there's so many damn things they could do with this, but I totally agree with this, so I wanted to give a huge shout out to you, bro. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I had a ton of fun reviewing this set for you and ranking them, but don't forget to go and order the WrestleCrate UK Pete Dunn. Use code DAMNTOYS when checking out over there. And if you don't go sign up for the WrestleCrate UK to get the Pete Dunn and the free figure, well, you done done it now, Brad. You done done it. You done done it. You crossed the line. I've been